Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is Faraz Rabbani from Seekers Guidance for our weekly Thursday sessions on reflections from the Quran for the MCC community. And today I wanted to touch upon one of my very favorite verses or very f favorite sets of verses in the Quran from Surah Al Hadid, verses 15. To 21 and these are a call for us to wake up and they've always struck me very deeply from Surah Al-Hadid verses 15 verses 16 onwards أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Has the time not come for those who believe that their hearts become reverent to the remembrance of Allah. وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ And that which has come down of the truth. وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلِيهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Has the time not come for those who believe for their hearts to become reverent to the remembrance of Allah and that which has come down of the truth? And that they not be like those who were granted the book before them. And the time became long and their hearts became hard. And many of them are indeed corrupt. It has the time not come. Is it not the time now? For those who believe that those who have attained belief, those who realize the gift that is faith, the gift that is guidance for their hearts to become reverent to the remembrance of Allah, right? to become truly humbled, to become truly realized. When, and I'm saying this first and foremost to myself, when will we go from just going about the matters of deen, from one deen activity to another deen activity, to do this and do that, to truly become humbled before Allah, to become reverent before Allah, to truly be with Allah to achieve that stillness that comes with being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how does that happen? to the remembrance of Allah right? this is the opportunity of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the opportunity of engaging in remembrance of Allah and that which has come down of the truth, meaning the guidance it contains. And to be aware of what has happened to those before us, such that their hearts became hard. What is it that hardens hearts? It is worldliness. And that worldliness leads to corruption. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse 17, اعلموا أن الله يحيي الأرض بعد موتها قد بينا الآيات لعلكم تعقلون Know well that Allah brings life to the earth after it is dead after its death We have indeed made clear for you the signs so that you may understand Know well that Allah brings the earth to life when we look. And you're spoiled out there in the Bay Area, but in places like here, in, in much of the world at least, the winter is barren. There's nothing on the trees. There's nothing on the ground. But when spring comes, things come to life. But the metaphor 
But here is referring to the heart that know well that Allah gives life to hearts after their death. There's the deadness of lack of faith. Our, our hearts have come to life. That's why we are gathered as believers, fasting, praying, listening in concern. That life that we find of faith and guidance and spiritual good, that is bi'ihya'illah. But by the life-giving of Allah. But Allah has made it upon us to fulfill the potential of that earth that is our heart. How? The example of the good word is like the good tree whose roots are firm and whose branches are in the sky. It gives fruit in every season by leave of its Lord. And we have made clear for you the, the, the signs, both the revelational signs in the book and the existential signs around us. So that you may think, understand, realize. And if we understand what matters if we understand that it is worldliness that har hardened the hearts of others if we realize from our own hearts that come to life with faith and guidance and good but also that just as the hearts come to life and they can die we our own life was gifted and it will go Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects that spiritual wellness to charity. So, verse 18, it says, إِنَّ الْمُصَّدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَّدِّقَاتِ وَأَقْرَضُوا اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا يُضَاعَفُ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ Truly, those who give in charity, virtuously, male and female, and those who give to Allah, a good loan, this will be multiplied many fold for them, and they will have a noble reward. The musaddiqeen are those who give in charity consistently, right? Those who give in charity consistently, unhesitatingly, virtuously, right? There are many, many implications of this term al-musaddiqeen those who give in charity completely fully gener generously virtuously okay? these are just some of the implications of this and those who give to Allah a goodly loan right? that's charity given purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, one of the aspects of that as well is to, to give a facilitative debt. This will be multiplied for them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they shall have a noble reward. Right? The reward is from al karim the most noble and the most generous. So we could have spent it in this life. And we'll get some fleeting benefit. We could have given it and kept giving and kept giving. Walahum and theirs is a noble reward. Charity, right? Al Musaddiqeen, those who give, right? It's connected in the next verse with. Becoming of the voracious, the champions of the truth, the truly faithful, the siddiqun, the people of real trueness. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ السِّدِّقُونَ And those who believe in Allah and His 
messengers, those are the truly faithful. And here it does not just mean those who profess faith. And very often, you know, one of the senses of the past tense in Arabic, because there's minun, which is the mudari'ah, which is, has a sense of the present and continual, and that emphasizes the ongoing nature of an action. But the past tense, the fi'l al-madi, the past tense, like here, walladina amanu billahi, those who believe, meaning here it's used, the past tense is used for something that is realized. Those who have, mean, those who have believed, meaning those who have truly believed, meaning those who are truly realized in their faith, and those who have truly believed in Allah. How? By perfecting our faith. How long will we live saying we believe, we believe, but? We are heedless. We don't feel the closeness to Allah. We are not present with Allah. Those who have truly believed in Allah. وَرُسُلِهِ And those who have truly believed in the messengers. How do we truly believe in the messengers? By living their message and embodying it. The messengers were exemplars of virtue. The messengers were embodiments of mercy. The messengers, right? Believing in them is not just, yeah, I believe in the messenger, I believe in so-and-so, but to strive to live it. And one of those things is when we read the Qur'an and we come to the stories of the prophets, the stories of the prophets are not just for your children, they're for you. And if you want your children to benefit from the stories of the prophets, and people ask for which, what series, what book do you recommend for our children to read? My answer would be, you should be the one reading those stories to your children. You should be sharing them with your children. Yes, it's good for your children to read. It's good for your children to listen to these stories. But what about you being the point of connection for them? How? by connecting to that example of the prophets, but also, of course, having deeply reflected and strive, and sincerely striving to realize the guidance of the messengers. Because what they are the essence of what it means to be a human being. Those who have truly believed in Allah and His messengers, those those are the truly faithful, as Siddiqun. And the martyrs, with their Lord, they have for them their reward. And their light. And those who have truly disbelieved and truly rejected to believe in our signs, those are the dwellers of hell. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُونَ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ <clears throat> Know well that this worldly life is nothing but play and idleness and adornment and boasting with one another and outdoing one another in amassing wealth and family. This is the worldly life. Okay? And it and Allah will tell us what is its reality. Know that this worldly life is nothing but play and entertainment. Laibun okay? walahu. An adornment. It's decoration. <laughs> like one of my friends 
Sheikh Ahmed Tijani would say. It's decoration, right? And boasting with one another, right? To get from place A to place B, you need something, you need a mode of transportation that will get you there safely, comfortably. You don't need all these fancy cars. I got the latest model and this. Tafakhur. وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ And outdoing one another in amassing wealth and family and all the things that relate to family, the house and all the other things. كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرَّ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا Like an abundant rainfall that impresses the farmers. Here, kuffar refers to the farmer because a farmer is called a kafir, the plural kuffar, because they cover over the seeds when they plant them. Just like a plentiful rainfall that impresses the farmers by its produce. And then it goes, it Yahij, it then it reaches its fullness. But then you see it begin to yellow, it begins to wilt. And then it becomes mere chaff. It's gone. And the hereafter, there's indeed there is intense punishment and forgiveness from Allah and absolute good pleasure. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And this worldly life is nothing but the amassment, the amassing of delusion. And this example, right, that this worldly life, it's this bountiful rain that comes down. And it impresses the farmer. Who's the farmer? It's you and me who are harvesting in this life. But we can either sow the seeds for worldly harvest that comes and goes and we won't take it with us. Or we can plant for the hereafter. But this dazzling of the worldly harvest impresses for a moment but at the moment it reaches its pinnacle, it begins to wilt and it comes to nothing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and in the Wafil Akhirah, in the next life, there is intense punishment and forgiveness from your Lord. It's waiting. All we have to do is to answer. All we have to do is to answer. And this worldly life is nothing but. Mata'ul Ghurur, the amassing of delusion. And then we read the last verse. Sabiqu ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. Rush with one another to forgiveness from your Lord. Wa jannatin arduha ka'ardis sama'i wal ard. And a garden more vast than the heavens the earth and that's your own garden that's not the whole of paradise that's just your garden is bigger not just than this world but than this universe and all it contains <inaudible> prepared for those who believe in Allah and his messengers <inaudible> that is the bounty of Allah. يؤتيه من يشاء. He gives it to whomever he wills. والله ذو الفضل العظيم. And Allah is the possessor of bounty. Tremendous. Right? So these verses like everything in the Quran give us much to reflect on. And I'd remind myself and you, 
take some moments to reflect on these verses from Surah Al-Hadid, from verses Surah Al-Hadid, verses 16 till 21. Much could be said about them. We've just touched a little bit on some of what these verses point towards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us deep understanding and deep appreciation of the Qur'an and make us of those who attain the realities of what these verses call to. May Allah bless us and you in this blessed month. And may he, he facilitate for us all to gather with our families, with our loved ones, with our friends, with our communities. And may we gather in the hereafter, in the presence of our beloved Messenger وسلم, under the eternal good pleasure and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, under the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that may grant us the beatific vision. Wujuhun yawma idhin nadira, faces on that day will be radiant. Ila rabbiha nadira, gazing at their Lord. Wa sallallahu ala al-habib al-azam wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alim wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.